What's up, Hoopers? You will not believe later in this video who liked a tweet when it came to a blockbuster trade with the Los Angeles Lakers. There is so many grumblings and so many conversations out there. You know that even Rob Palenka stated, hey, we're gonna wait till Thanksgiving, but he is making calls every single day. You know it and I know it. This big blockbuster trade that would send not only one great player over to the Lakers, but multiple. In fact, there's two different trade packages being talked about. That's what we're going to discuss. Now, some of these players that are coming over, how are they going to fit with the Lakers? That's one thing. See, some Lakers fans are just like, get Russ out of here. I don't even care who we get, but you have to be strategic on this. You don't want to just trade everything away and get some bums coming in. So I like to break down the shot charts. I like to break down career stats. And also, I love to watch film from a Hooper's perspective and just see if these dudes can fit with not only the Lakers, but a LeBron James and Anthony Davis and the pieces that they have. I'm going to be doing all that. Wait till you see who these players coming over are. And I am your NBA white guy. I talk all things NBA hoops from a Hooper's perspective. And if you love that kind of content, then dunk that like button. And make sure you subscribe so that you never miss a thing. I always find it fascinating to see these trade talks and to, to break it down. That's the first thing that I usually do. Who's the players involved and what does this mean for the team You know, acquiring the players? What are their strengths and what are the weaknesses of the current team? Obviously, with the Lakers right now and me playing you know, basketball my whole life and all through college, you understand one thing. Hustle and defense is exactly what can get you very far. Now, what, what happens when you lack that defense and that hustle is usually when you know the season's over or you have chemistry killers or you just know you're not as good as other teams. But that energy, the defense, the hustle, it can carry you to win a lot of games. But what we've seen with the Lakers so far is a lot of missed shots. And what that does starts killing the psyche of not only the shooters, but the other players in the locker room, which makes them point fingers, and you will see the energy start to dip. So it is imperative that you go find just a couple shooters, not to go out there and knock down 10 threes a game, but when it matters at the end of a game, when you're making a run to catch up and tie the ball game, you can make one three-point basket, get the crowd going, and completely flip the script. So who would do that? The players that are involved in this trade. Now this comes in from multiple sources, and I've done a few videos on this team, but it's the Hornets. The Hornets have LaMelo Ball. They've got some interesting young pieces. They do have a lot of draft capital. And at this point, are they really going to be viable throughout the season? Or can they really, you know, get into the draft lottery, try and get Vic or another one of these star players to go side by side with LaMelo Ball and be good for a decade? Let's break this down. Now, as I, I told you, there's actually a few different trades. So this is the first one that I saw. Everybody's reporting on this stuff. And there's been a bunch of tweets. And not only, you know, has there been some tweets, wait till you see who liked the tweets. So this one is a proposed trade that lands $120 million all-star, $96 million guard for Russell Westbrook. So when you go down and read, uh, you know, more of this, what this one basically entails is right here. Now you've got yourself LaMelo Ball, but obviously with a massive draft class, everybody's talking about Big Vic there, but you got Scoot Henderson. There's some great players that you could team up. So, you know, you could take a year off and just kind of get this team where it needs to be. We saw this with the Pelicans. Zion was ready to go last season. Every time you caught him, you know, at a court practicing or something, he wanted to play. He's doing through the leg, you know, dunks. But these teams realize, hey, this isn't our year yet. Let's just get healthy. Let's get some more pieces. And next year, let's go all in. So what would this trade entail? It would be the 2027 first round pick. Russell Westbrook and sending over Max Christie. Now, Max Christie is an incredible little, you know, young talent. He's a developing player, but I don't think he's really moving the needle for the Lakers right now. But what about a young team? Yes, I think he'd be a great, you know, addition to a, a piece here. Now, why would the Hornets want to move off of Hayward and Terry Rozier? Uh, which I didn't mention in the trade, but that's what it is because they have some bigger contracts that, you know, obviously that the Hornets want to get off of so that they can get this nucleus, this core nucleus built up. So what does that mean for the Lakers? Well, let's just show you over here on the shot chart. This is Gordon Hayward's career shot chart. Now, the one thing I want to talk about is not just like, okay, he can shoot 30% from this corner, 60%. You know, it's it's not the, the percentage near. It's it's like, what does this shot chart truly mean? Like, I, I look at this from a Hooper's perspective, and, and right away, the first thing that I notice, 
2,758 three three point attempts, a career 37 percent. In fact, I looked up, um, you know, his stats from the past few years. Obviously, he had that bad year. Man, you remember that that Celtics team when he, he was actually against LeBron and the Cavs when he snapped his leg? Look at he bounced right back the next season with 72 games. So right now he's playing anywhere from 45 to, to 50 something games. You know, is that troublesome? Not really. I think you know if he's playing for a team who's truly title contending I think he'll play more games you know he's been with the Hornets they're not really even an exciting team uh, and the fit with the Celtics it just didn't work so that's this is the year you saw him basically wanting out that whole team was a mess that's Kyrie Irving all that but if you look at it I mean some of these major years that he was playing last year 38 point percent 41 percent 39 percent so this is a guy who shoots a ton of three-pointers every single season now the one thing i've noticed with the lakers is they're incredible at defense they're incredible at hustle and yes darvin ham i am applauding you for getting them to do that but we got to get some shooters out there and uh, and honestly you know a guy like matt uh, ryan cole swider these dudes need you need to put them in some later situations to to see if they can hit some shots down the stretch because that is the number one thing you need and why i say those two guys is when you look at them they're looking to shoot, right? When I was playing college, I was just like a lot of these Lakers players. I was an athletic guard, a slasher, a dunker. And if I could get you to my shoulder, get downhill, get to the rack, that's where I wanted to go. So if I was out on that three-point line and I had three, four feet, and there were still 15, 20 seconds on the shot clock, I kind of thought about my shot a little bit. Sometimes I would go up and, and shoot that three, but it was usually towards the end of the shot clock where if I caught the pass out on the, on the three-point line, that I was in rhythm shooting it and would hit that because I wasn't thinking about should I shoot it, should I go to the rack. Now I'm seeing this with a lot of the Lakers, and maybe you guys don't notice that, but you know, playing basketball a lot, these dudes are thinking about their shot. When they get a couple feet and they do those kind of jab steps right there, they're like, should I shoot it? He's giving me space. Like you go through all these things in your head. A guy like Gordon Hayward, who shot 3,000 three pointers, it, this is why I love Matt Ryan. I'm high on it. He's missing his shots right now. But he comes off screens. First of all, he's moving. Gordon Hayward, he moves. You need these offensive dudes who actually are cutting, slashing, going block to block, going wing to wing. It just opens up the entire D or offense for a LeBron James. Right now, they got a bunch of dudes just standing there. So I love watching Gordon Hayward because he's a guy who's constantly moving, like a J.J. Redick, right? And when they catch it, they are shooting it. I don't care if there's a hand in the face. I don't care if there's a guy near him. They are going up and they're shooting that ball. Now, I'm going to break down not only the other person in this trade, uh, you know, in his shot chart, but also the second trade with the exact same team because there's two different packages that could come over. But before I do that, the only way that my videos really get out there to more people is when you guys engage with it and hit the like button. So that's the only thing I ask from you guys. I'll keep doing these videos, breaking down the actual, you know, trades and breaking down these players with shot charts and with my, you know, stories of playing. But you have to hit the like button. At the end of it, we're going to vote with basically trade A, which is what I'm talking about now, or trade B, and then anything else that you guys hear. So at the end of this, let's just rank which one of these trades you would like to see happen for the Lakers. So here we go. We're right, we're right back here. So the second player, if they're giving away, you know, Russell Westbrook, Max Christie, 2027 pick, they're going to get Gordon Hayward and they're going to get Terry Rozier back. So Terry Rozier, again, it's another guard. I get it, but that's fine. When you have bona fide point guards, you know, uh, and, and Patrick Beverly, we're, we're, we didn't bring him in to be an absolute just knockdown shooter. Everybody looks at him as like a career 40% shooter. He averages six to seven points a game for his career. So again, I've talked about this before. That's not a dude in the scouting report. You're like, you got to put a hand up. He shoots 40%. No, everybody knows Pat Bev is there for defense. We have LeBron. He's going to be running the point. So if you're going to have a shooter, it doesn't matter if he's 6'7 or 6'4. Like if he is a knockdown shooter, like a Terry Rozier. Hey, I, and I love Kendrick Nunn. Kendrick Nunn can be this guy too. But Terry Rozier, again, 2,500 three-point attempts. He is really a good shooter from out in the arc all over um, you know, almost 38% career shot. This is a guy, again, who can just get up and get his shot off and not have to think about it. And if we look at this, I mean, Terry Rozier is also a dude who's just been healthy. 74 games, 80, 79, 63, 69, 73. So he's he's available. He's a healthy body. This is a guy also who's averaged, you know, 39%, 41%, 38%. And this year, you know, he's at 40 in two games. But 
hey, 23 points a game, 24 points a game. Now you have a guy like Lonnie Walker who can pour in 20. You got a, a point guard like Terry Rozier who can pour in 20 and shoot 40% from the three-point line. This is a completely different, you know, team. And uh, Terry Rozier has always been a hustle guy as well. So, uh, you know, an over 40% shooter. So a guy who's healthy, who can shoot good from three-point line and go get a bucket. This makes the Lakers more unguardable, right? Right now, what are they doing? They're just packing the paint because a guy's dribbling up. He has to make some kind of move to the middle and kick it out to a shooter. Well, the entire defense is in the middle saying, go ahead, let these guys shoot and beat us from the three-point line, which is, you know, the opposite. You play the Warriors, you're like, okay, we're just going to guard the three-point line. You guys can beat us in the middle. So that's the one thing when you have four or five players now who can all score, you have to, as a defense, you know, respect that. And it's going to bring the middle out just a little bit so that they can't just pack the paint. Trade number two and the tweet that this Hornets player liked. Let's go check it out. So this was an article out here that was uh, written as well. There's actually quite a few, but Gordon Hayward was seen liking this tweet here with no Noble Savage, where the best trade for the Lakers is a trade Russ to... Uh, the Hornets for Hayward, P.J. Washington, and Kelly Oubre. Here's the difference, right? And and this one on paper looks way, way, way better because you get uh, Kelly Oubre. That's a, a very, very electrifying player, six foot eight, six foot nine. He is confident as you know what. And so I, I love confident players, especially wearing the purple and gold because it's just a different mindset, right? Uh, you're seeing it right now. The 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 purple and gold playing against or, or with side by side with LeBron James. It makes players sometimes shrink, or some players have their career years because they're wide open all the time. So a guy like uh, Kelly Oubre, that dude just bleeds confidence. So um, PJ Washington is another guy. So I think if you go Gordon, PJ, and Kelly, obviously there's three players there. So we gotta either send more players over, or you gotta wave some. So I think a guy like Max Christie would probably be in the trade. Obviously Russell Westbrook, and then they can write that contract off next year. So you get some young talent. I'm, I'm sitting here going, I don't like the trade and I want to keep and maintain him. But you could put Kendrick Nunn in one of these trades because I'm telling you right now, and we watched it all preseason. We watched it in 2020. He's an ascending young player who is really, really going to have a great career. But I don't know who else goes or if you just wave one of these big men who's on one of these you know, contracts. But now these three players come over. So we already broke down Gordon Hayward. The one thing that I want to talk about is P.J. Washington. Now, first of all, this is something we saw with uh, Pat Bev. You know, he was liking some of these comments. He was putting up the prey emoji, you know, when the Lakers were talking about trading for Pat Bev. And he knew it like a month in advance, right? So is there something more to this Hornets trade? Now, when I went over here to P.J. Washington, the first thing I noticed, you know, we get the height, right? Gordon Hayward's, what, 6'8", 6'9", without looking at it, 6'7", to 6'8" and can shoot the ball right here's another guy pj washington six foot seven career stats uh he's a guy you know playing anywhere from 60 to 65 games a year um 37 38 36 percent shooter this year you know he's averaging a right around 13 14 points a game and shooting a lot of threes so he's 41 percent this year but what i'm looking at is i like guys who who shoot uh, a lot of threes and what's their percentage so already through two games he's averaging six three point or uh, yeah six three point attempts a game at, at 40 percent so we need to have these bona fide shooters out there so as you can see here he shot 833 uh, three pointers it's just over about three seasons now he's got 189 games so just doing simple math i think it's right around four and a half to five three-point attempts a game again I like that I like a guy who shoots you know he has that attempts up because this just tells me that they're catch it catch ready shooters right this is somebody who really can shoot the ball and at you know a career of almost 38 percent that's really good and, and another telling sign is some of this is right here in these wing spots so and you know, a lot of guys are really good from the corners because it's just a little bit shorter of a three he obviously is over here 46 percent but he's a confident shooter, and the majority of his three-pointers are coming from the top over here. So if you're going to run pick and rolls, LeBron James and Anthony Davis, or Kendrick Nunn, or Patrick Beverly's this pick and roll, we were getting a lot of these shots on these wings right here, and nobody's hitting them. So it's good to have a good, confident six foot seven wing who can hit from straight away or from these top wing positions. And now you go with some kind of starting lineup. Now, I'm loving Lonnie Walker, and that dude is pure athlete. Some of those those finishes where he's up there, you know, finishing up halfway up the glass, his head's at the rim. 
I love that. And he can pour in 20 points, but um, that's, a, that's a great player to bring off the bench to carry that second unit, or he can start, whatever. But if you've got a PJ Washington at six foot seven, a Kelly Oubre, what's he, six foot eight, Gordon Hayward, six foot eight, LeBron, six nine, Anthony Davis, now you've got a plethora of these wing t- uh, style players, and they're also shooters, right? So this is really going to increase that size, um, you know, and, and you can see with some of the uh, smaller players out there that they have with the Patrick Beverly, Lonnie Walker, even Juan Toscano, who's six foot six. They are playing incredible defense. And you can't forget about your other NBA white guy, Austin Reeves. I love me some AR this year, but th- this brings in, you know, plenty size. Man, you got a guy like Kelly Oubre out there, too, with his hustle, his He's the only one that's kind of an oddball, though, too, because he does like the ball a lot. I mean, he does shoot a ton. Um, so is that going to really affect stuff, or is it going to work great with a LeBron James? Because the other thing you need with a LeBron James team is cutters and slashers and athletic people because he's going to get into the middle, and if you're cutting and slashing in there instead of just standing, so we, we can have people standing out there for shooters, but you have cutters. They're going to get wide open dunks. So now it's your turn to vote. A would be bringing over Terry Rozier and Gordon Hayward. B would be Gordon Hayward, PJ Washington, Kelly Oubre, and obviously maybe sending both the picks. So for this one, we're going to send one pick for Terry Rozier and uh, Gordon Hayward. We're going to send two picks, Max Christie, uh, to get Kelly Oubre, to get uh, Gordon Hayward, and to get PJ Washington. So you guys vote down below. Which one would you like to see more? That's a tough one. Either way, I would love to see this trade with big, tall shooters. Tough uh, point guard play out of Terry Rozier. Incredible young athletic play out of Kelly Oubre. But Gordon Hayward's a shooter. P.J. Washington's a shooter. Terry Rozier, which one you like most? And I am your NBA white guy talking all things NBA hoops from a Hooper's perspective. So make sure right now, if you haven't yet, do me a favor. Hit that like button. And make sure you subscribe so that you never miss a thing. And until my next video, homies, we'll catch you later.